Harvey the Spice Queen and today I'm going to show you how to make a chicken jalfrezi. Now I get a lot of comments about what is a jalfrezi, what's a masala, what's a dupiaza. Well actually there's only a very, the basic recipe is almost identical. But then it's what we add into that recipe. So this is basically a chicken masala, a bit more sauce and red peppers, yellow peppers today and spring onions and it has uh, like almost like a fajita like sort of smoky flavor with the with the chicken and the peppers and it's a lighter version for chicken masala you can make it mild you can make it hot so we're just going to do the basic recipe today and then once you get comfortable you can sort of add spinach or whatever you want so jalfrezi basically is a chicken masala with a bit more vegetables okay so let's go through the ingredients it looks like quite a lot so here we have so we have the chicken, which I've sort of cubed into about three centimetre pieces. Don't get too chefy, as long as they're sort of small pieces, as long as they're all the same size, they'll cook at the same time. Then we have two onions, which I've um, just diced. You can slice them, you can dice them. It doesn't really matter for this recipe. They will eventually break down. We have a tin of tomatoes, and I do like to use tin tomatoes, because I think they add a lovely sauce to the recipe. If you want to use fresh, you can. I prefer tin, there's a 400 gram tin of tomatoes. Get a good quality brand. Salt for seasoning, and we have some fresh coriander stalks and leaves. Then we have turmeric, which we use as an anti-inflammatory and it has healing properties and adds a tiny bit of yellow, but don't have your nails done and then put your hands in turmeric. You'll get yellow nails, you don't want that. Okay, and then we have chili powder, which is essential. A garam masala, which is eight different spices, uh, means a warm spice, which is essential to this recipe and then some tandoori powder which adds that tiny bit of a red colour. When I say tiny bit of red colour, tiny bit, not the red red that you may have seen in restaurants and takeaways. And then the, the, so the vegetable part of the dish, the jalfrezi part of the dish is two spring onions which I've sort of cut into two centimetre pieces and, and the recipe in the cookbook actually says red bell peppers but I put some yellow ones in there because I think they look really pretty and you know, I love the colours, autumnal colours. So that's everything and here I've got some I'm just going to show you very closely. So this is a recipe called for fresh ginger, root ginger and garlic. Now then, I've been really busy. I've been busy catering and I thought, well, who's got the time to do fresh ginger and garlic? So I've cheated. I bought the ready mix stuff you put in the freezer. And the reason I don't mind advocating this particular brand is it's a 100% ginger, 100% garlic. And look, it's in little frozen cubes. Brilliant, works so well. So that's, it looks like a lot of ingredients, but it'll all come together if you just watch the video. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my cooker and I want to add the oil in. Sorry, it's six tablespoons of oil as well. It may seem like there's a lot of spices there and there's a quite a lot to remember. And I do agree with you. And that's why sometimes just for the sake of ease, if you don't want to roast and grind your own spices, you can just use one of my little um, Parveen the Spice Queen spice bags. They're a perfect blend for each recipe and it's easy and they've got a long shelf life. So if you don't want to blend your own, just use a spice bag. Okay, so that's it. The oil's in there. And as you can see, it's quite a large sort of pot I've used because it's going to be a lot of stirring and cooking. I don't want to get the splatters. So a nice deep pasta pan is what you need. And I always use a stainless steel pan. I think it works really well with the recipe. In go the onions. Okay. Now what we're going to do is let them fry off. Now I do get a lot of comments, a lot of emails when I'm teaching about the amount of oil. Well, yes, it's the curry. It, it, you can need, you need oil. It's like saying to me, well, Parveen, can I bake a cake? I'm not going to use butter or flour or eggs. You know, can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Lots of food analogies, but you get what I'm trying to say. You do need the oil for the recipe to be just right. If you are worried and you'll use less oil, I suggest cook the recipe and then drain off the oil at the end of the recipe because you need the oil to fry off the spices and for the recipe to actually work. Okay, so that needs about five minutes. So I'm not going to babysit that. So what I can do is I can go make a cup of tea or have a little break and I want those to be very light golden brown. Oh, look, we've got a cup of tea here. So they need to be nice golden brown. So I'll come back in a few minutes when they are golden brown. So now the onions have been frying for about two to three minutes. And you can see, if you look very carefully, they're getting brown around the edges. They're actually, if I lift that up and show you, they're beginning to caramelise. So 
So they're just getting a hint of brown. Well, they've gone translucent now. And the next stage is they're going to start caramelising and going to light golden brown. But not really brown. People say golden brown. Actually, they're not golden brown. They're more of like a murky yellow colour. We need to cook the onions till they just pass translucent. Nearly there. OK, so that's another minute and a half. About another minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ginger and the garlic. OK, I'm going to actually add a dash of water first to make sure that the onion, the garlic doesn't burn. So let wait for the sizzle. You ready? Lovely. <laughs> I love that sound. And all that's done is cool down the cooking process. Mind the spitting. OK, so now I'd say they're a lovely golden brown or orange. In goes the ginger and garlic. And like I said, I used the, the, the frozen stuff today because I've just been cheating. But that's OK. I believe the spice is the most important thing, but the recipe does work with this. The minute it goes in, it starts cooking. And you can smell that absolutely delicious ginger and garlic believe it or not when you do the end product you don't actually taste the ginger and garlic you just know it flavors the curry so we have all the spices i've explained all the spices to you but i'm going to make life easy again and use one of my spice bags so this is harvey the spice queen spice range for chicken gel frazzy in it goes no measuring no thinking open the bag gorgeous and in it goes that's it whole thing actually my, my son's learning to cook my, my youngest son is now 20 and he says oh mum I love your spice bag you just add them let's turn that down a little bit turn the gas down I'm going to add a splash of water because I can sense that they're burning slightly a really hot hob this is give it a minute and a minute or so let them fry you can see it changed colour and now I'm going to add the tomatoes ok so I've got Tin tomatoes here, and I said before, I do like to use tin tomatoes. It gives it a lovely sauce. Okay, in they go. The whole tin. We turn that up. And then we're going to start cooking. Now, now you're thinking, that doesn't look like a curry sauce. Well, no, it doesn't. Not yet. And let's add the salt. Okay, so you've got two teaspoons of salt. Um, you do need the salt to bring out the flavour of the chilies. If you are worried about salt, you can reduce it by half, but you do need the salt. Okay, so that's it. Now, at this stage, sometimes I will add some stalks of the coriander because that's where all the flavour is. Okay, now I'm going to have a little taste. Now, I'm not expecting miracles because at the moment you've got onions, ginger, garlic, spices, salt. And actually, the, f the flavours haven't married together. And what you're going to get is just... I mean, if I just show that to you, you can see that, you know, you've got the, you, can see the you can see the tomatoes, you can see the onions. It's not really a curry sauce yet. It's just an amalgamation of loads of ingredients. And I want that to cook together. I want it to reduce. I want the tomatoes to break down, onions to break down, and that will be our curry sauce. So I'm going to have a taste of this. Just use the back of the spoon and have a little taste. Mm. Oh, it's quite nice actually. <laughs> I'm tasting good already, but I know I want those flavours to start infusing. So I'm going to let them have a little sit and little play together. Let them infuse for ten minutes. And we'll come back after ten minutes and see what's happened to the sauce. So here's what I made earlier, and this has been simming for about ten minutes now, and all the flavours have infused now. As and the colours change. If you look at the that sauce is a deeper, richer, darker colour and that will be affected in the flavour. So if I have a little taste of this now, it'll be all coming together. Mmm, I nearly burnt my finger then. But I do have asbestos finger, so don't try this at home. Wait for it to cool down. Okay, so um, I'm just going to turn that down and add a dash of water. It's a very important part of the process, this particular process because the, the flavour of the curry comes from the way the sauce is actually cooked. And we need the sauce to be thick and rich before we add the chicken or whatever meat you're cooking. Now, you know you get the jar sauces, of curry sauces. This is what you'd get in a jar sauce. This is exactly what you'd get, but with loads of preservatives. But we know this is just pure ingredients. In now goes the chicken. So I've diced this earlier. 
um, and it's nice and clean with very little fat. And actually, um, what you notice is I'm not sealing it, I'm not roasting it, I'm not pan frying it first, I'm not marinating it. It's raw. In goes the raw chicken, and that's exactly what the recipe calls for. So I'm going to stir that in, and chicken is porous. So what is that's going to do is immediately ingest all that flavour of the curry sauce. Now what's going to happen now is the meat, because the chicken has quite, well it has a lot of water, so the water is going to disperse from the chicken and then it's going to become quite watery. The whole process will become watery, so you want to turn it up on high and we're going to cook. Oop. My gas went off then. <laughs> we're going to cook it on high and we're going to stir fry the meat in the sauce. And that takes about 10 minutes, but I want you to persevere. When I'm teaching cooking and I get to this particular process here, and somebody says, well, Parveen, if you're making a jar freezer, you're going to add water at the end, and I've got my water, boiling water here. Why not just add the water now? You could, you could add the water, and then you get a spicy casserole. It won't taste that curry-like flavour that you want. What we want to do is fry off the meat in the spicy oil. That's what gives it the curry flavour. So as you can see, the meat is beginning to seal. It's becoming white while it's sealing around the edges. Lovely. And can you see how that is changing colour? It's got deeper, richer flavour. And yes, it has the oil, so you can see the oil's come to the top now. And now what's happening is the spices are frying. Spices are frying and the chicken is cooking in those spices. And we're going to get that really deep, gorgeous flavour that you expect from a chicken jar frizzy. Okay, so I'm really happy with the way that looks. So that needs another five to ten minutes of stirring. Now then, I know it seems a lot, so I don't want you to constantly stand here and stir. But you can babysit it, you know, go have a cup of tea, go make a few phone calls and just keep one eye on it. You know, that eye, not that one. Just keep an eye on it and just babysit it and so it doesn't burn. And if it does burn and you find that it's coming, catching on the bottom of the pan, just add a splash of water. You can hear that, and that, what that will do is cool down the cooking process and then stop it from catching at the bottom. But this is a really important part of the process, and it's called to boon. You know, we had lambuna, chicken boona. Boona means to cook. It's actually, it's actually a verb and not an adjective. So it's a verb that so means to stir fry on a high heat whilst the sauce reduces, and that's exactly what we're doing. So I'm going to let that cook. I'm going to go put the kettle on. I have a cup of tea. I love a cup of tea. I might treat myself to a biscuit. Um, and we'll come back in 10 minutes and see what's happening in the pot. Add our peppers, add our coriander and our spring onions and that basically is the recipe. So now after 10 minutes we can see what's happened is the sauce was reduced even more. The sauce has got thicker and the chicken is half cooked. And that's the stage I want it to be at because now what I want to do is add the peppers. Now then I've used, um, the recipe actually says red peppers but I've used yellow ones you can use green ones although i don't green are a little bit bitter I, I will just go with red and yellow okay yeah orange these is actually orange looks good i just like the colors of food i think we do eat with our eyes obviously smell is important but we do eat with our eyes first in go the spring onions the lovely green flavor and color of the onions are lovely give that a stir only for about two minutes because i want the vegetables to keep their shape particularly the peppers I want to see the peppers in the final dish. Okay, but look at the colours. Absolutely gorgeous. Just so appetising with the red and the green and the chicken. And actually, very, very fresh tasting curry this is. It's quite light gel phrasing. What I'm going to do is, I like to do this. I'm just going to add a few leaves of coriander and I can see my cameraman going, no. <laughs> I love the flavour of coriander. This is his lunch, by the way. So I'm going to, shall I add it all? No, that'll annoy him. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Okay, um, a few leaves of coriander, because that, what happens is that will cook through and you won't get that real sort of pungent flavour of coriander. It'll just sort of simmer in the background nicely. That's it. Now, that is, that's about it. I just, don't you love the way that look, the peppers shine? Just stunning. And I do think we do eat with our eyes and I want the curry to look good. I want you to think that looks like a beautiful curry. Not only does it taste good, but it looks good too. So in that now, I'm going to give it another minute and a, a minute, so two minutes of stirring. I'm going to add uh, some boiling water and what I'm doing is creating a sauce, okay? So 
put that down. So if I've got two, about 200 mils of boiling water, in that goes. That's calmed it down, hasn't it? <laughs> and what that's going to do is create a sauce. I don't know why I'm whispering. Because <laughs> everything's calm now. Everything's like, oh, chilled, everything's cooked. Give that a stir. Now the aim of the game here is, I want the flavour of the peppers to infuse into the sauce and it will just give it that beautiful peppery flavour. One thing I've kept, actually notice I kept is, you know the seeds that you have in the peppers? I like them because they have no real heat but they add a sort of prettiness to the dish. So I'm just going to sprinkle those in. I suppose this is why they call attention to detail, don't they? I like that look. I think, look how pretty they look. We can see them simmering away. That looks beautiful, doesn't it? Give that a stir. Okay. Now at this point here, if we've, we've got a sauce. You can see the sauce, look. And that's going to be lovely on your rice or, or with a dip your naan bread in. Oh, gosh. Nearly lunchtime, I'm getting hungry. Okay. I'm going to add a tiny bit more coriander. Only a little bit, because I know Mark doesn't like it. This is his lunch. A little bit of coriander. Give that a stir. And that's it, because we spent a long time with the cooking process with stirring. So now it's a case of just simmering. So I'm going to simmer that for about 10 minutes. So um, I'll see you in 10 minutes. We'll come back and we will see what's happening in the pot in 10 minutes. So it's had 10 minutes now simmering on low and it'll be absolutely perfect now. Let's go for the big reveal. Wow, look at that, absolutely divine. So what's happened now, you can see that lovely, thick, juicy curry sauce. That just looks delicious and it smells amazing. Oh, okay, only one thing for me to do, which is the best part of cooking is the eating. Look at that. Can you see it? The colors just look amazing. So you've got the red and you've got the yellow and the chicken. Okay, so get my naan bread, dip it into the sauce and go in. Mm. That's really good. I am Parvina's ice cream and I'll see you next time.